college student mysteriously vanishes after receiving cryptic phone call. 18-year-old Zeb Quinn had recently graduated high school and was working his way through college at a local Walmart in Asheville, North Carolina. On the evening of January 2, Zeb and his friend Robert Owens had no idea what would happen that night. Zeb Quinn was a quiet and reserved young man. The full-time AB Tech student was working full-time at Walmart while he attended Asheville Buncombe Technical Community College. But Quinn was making money and doing well. He was even thinking about purchasing a new car. Zeb was friends with Robert Jason Owens, who worked at the Volvo plant in Asheville, North Carolina. On the night of January 2, 2000, Owens had arranged to meet up with Zeb in the Walmart parking lot. Then the two were going to drive separately to look at a vehicle Zeb was thinking about buying. That evening, Zeb Quinn had gotten off work at the Hendersonville Road Walmart at around 9 p.m. The car he wanted, a Mitsubishi Eclipse, was at a dealership just outside of town. The two made their way down Long Shoals Road, when suddenly, Zeb got a page and had to stop his car. The two stopped at a Sitco station on Hendersonville Road, and Zeb ran to a payphone. When he had finished the phone call, he walked over to his car. He was frantic, according to Owens. He hastily told Owens that he needed to go. Something was very wrong. At around 9.45 p.m., Zeb Quinn jumped into his car and drove off in a panic. On his way out of the Sitco parking lot, he rear-ended Owens' vehicle. But with no idea where he was going and no way to contact him, Owens decided that nothing could be done. He talked to Zeb the next day about paying for the damage. The next day, Zeb Quinn never returned home. Zeb wasn't an outgoing individual, he liked his job and enjoyed going to college. He hadn't packed anything, no clothes, contact lens solution, and no money. He had simply driven off into the night and vanished. In that evening, Robert Owens was treated at a local hospital for fractured ribs and a head injury. He said that he sustained in a second car accident after Zeb had driven off. No accident report was filed with police. It was an odd coincidence to be sure. The day after Zeb disappeared, his mother filed a missing persons report. Then, two days later, the Hendersonville Road Walmart received a strange phone call. The man said that he was Zeb Quinn and he was sick. But Zeb's co-worker knew Zeb's voice, whoever had called out of his shift was certainly not Zeb Quinn. Police traced the phone call back to the Asheville Volvo plant where Robert Owens worked. Once questioned, Owens admitted to making the phone call on his friend's behalf. According to Owens, Zeb had called him and asked for him to call in sick for him. But there was no proof of this conversation having occurred. Once they were able to track down the page sent to Zeb's pager, the police found that it was from the home of his aunt, Ina Ustik. She told police that she had been having dinner at the home of Tamara Taylor, the mother of another suspect in Zeb's disappearance, Misty Taylor. Misty and her boyfriend, Wesley, were also present at the dinner. Misty and Zeb had been friends, and Zeb had some interest in becoming more than that. But Misty's boyfriend, Wesley Smith, was abusive, and it seemed that he had threatened Zeb after he had discovered she was telling tales to her new friend, Zeb. Meanwhile Aunt Ida stated that her house had been broken into on the morning of Zeb's disappearance. Nothing had been stolen, but a few picture frames had been moved around. As odd as all these coincidences were, nothing could compare to what the police found two weeks later. Two weeks after his disappearance, police found Zeb's 1990 Mazda protege in the parking lot of the Little Pig's Barbecue on McDowell Street. The car seemed untouched at first until police looked a bit closer. A pair of large lips and exclamation points had been drawn in lipstick on the back window of the car. The car also contained several empty drink bottles and a jacket that did not belong to Zeb. The driver's seat and steering wheel had been pulled forward, which indicated that someone much shorter than Zeb had been driving. An untraceable hotel key was also found in the car. But the strangest item of all was a live Labrador puppy. In the weeks before his disappearance, Quinn had been heard discussing some rather sensitive topics with his Walmart co-workers. Zeb had mentioned that he feared for his life. The ongoing police investigation indicates that it is most likely that Zeb Quinn was murdered on the night of January 8. For the longest time, the case went cold, and no links between Owens and Misty were found. That is, until 2009. In October 2009, detectives gathered hair, fingerprint and saliva samples from a 28-year-old West Asheville woman, believed to be involved in some way with Zeb Quinn's disappearance. Then, on March 17, 2015, 
police finally arrested Robert Owens. The arrest was for an unrelated incident regarding the disappearance and murder of Food Network star television contestant Christy Sharon, as well as her husband J.T. Codd, and their unborn child. Despite the arrest and Owens' implication in the Shern slash Cobb disappearance, police were still unable to link Robert Owens to the demise of Zeb Quinn on the night of January 2, 2000. However, Asheville police still believe that Owens is the key to unlocking what happened to Zeb. In the meantime, Denise Vlahakis, Zeb's mother, continues to scour the internet for answers about her son's disappearance. The Facebook group dedicated to her son is still up and running, and she implores followers to continue to pray for her son and send her any information they might have on Zeb's whereabouts or even his ultimate fate.